Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Lydia's Booktastic Podcast. My name is Lydia and I love to read and with my dad we put this podcast together so I could tell other boys and girls about the books that I read and what I think of them. We look at all types of books, short stories, comics, fact books, book series and one-offs but what's connecting them all is that I will have read them and will be letting you know what I think. In this episode we will take a look at The Secrets of Grindelwald by Jackie Burke and chat about my favourite books at the moment. Hi Lydia, how's it going? Good. Episode 11 already? Wow. Yeah. Wow, so many episodes and so much reading. So, we are going to talk today about... It's a 10 and a 1. A 10 and a 1, yeah, that's where you want to look at it. And next time, probably, we'll have a 10 and a 2. Absolutely. So, um, today, what book are we looking at? We're looking at The Secrets of Grindlewood by Irish author Jackie Bourke. Yeah. And uh, Jackie got in touch with us and she asked us, would we be interested in having a read of this? But it turns out you were going to read this book anyway, weren't you? Yeah. Grand. And um, in our school library, um, sometimes there are these posters of covers of a book. And guess what happened? Go on. Um, there was a poster of um, four of the books in this series, including this one, um, except for one um i think it came out in 2013 ophelia's orb that one isn't there oh i see okay right great so um so there's a series of books i think is this is this a first this is the first edition this is the first part of a series of books is it yeah great as usual you tell the basic story without going into too much details so what is the story of the secrets of grindlewood Is it that scary or is it just... No. Oh, unfortunately. Kind of so is it more like this then? No. Well, okay. well it is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And they don't do that. Yeah. But, um, but it's kind of kiddies. Yeah. So, okay. So tell us, what's the story about the uh, secrets of Grindlewood? Well, they um, it starts where um, the Grindles mm-hmm. kind of cool isn't it they um they're called the Gr- they're the grindles family and they're moving into grindlewood oh wow okay so um they move house mm-hmm. to the grindlewood house yeah and they discover that they have an enchanted garden no way oh also um you know how sometimes when there are books in a series like harry potter mm-hmm. you say harry potter um in that there's one adventure in each story Right. Well, this whole series is one big adventure. The adventure actually didn't end in this book. So the basically, there's this story is this is the first part in all the other in in what's known as a kind of a, a series of one big adventure. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. So we don't want to obviously ruin the story, but who's the characters in 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 the? Uh, there's two um, boys. There's a boy and a girl, is there? Yeah. Gloria is the man. Okay. Um. The dad is Greg. Mm-hmm. Jamie and Jemima are brothers and sisters. Okay. So they are sister. So they all and move in, yeah. Yeah, and they're both in the they're all they're all Grindles. Mm-hmm. They came from Alaska. Oh right. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um and mo- the main main characters mm-hmm. are the animals, but the actual main characters of the animals are Timber and Teddy. Those are the pets that they have in Alaska. And guess what? What? The um garden the house actually came with pets. Oh, I see. So when they moved so, in, there was already pets there. Yeah, okay. so there's um, two dogs, Timber and Teddy. They mm-hmm. came with um, them. They moved house as well. They're yeah. from Alaska as well. Um, Timber is actually a, an Alaskan Malamute. It's kind of like a husky, uh-huh. except way bigger. Way fluffier, way okay. cuter. Cool. I well, think we've yeah, seen a few yeah. around here or something. Yeah. And then there's another animal, is there? So. Yeah. And um, then there is the house came with three pets, mm-hmm. but it didn't say it on the script thingy that oh, they right. okay. they got. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of a surprise. Right. And um, also gave her chickens, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Pond and a ducks and stuff like that. Blah blah blah. Uh, so um, yeah, the three. Actually, the four pets that came in it mm-hmm. were two cats. Well, actually, one of them, it's a kitten. Mm-hmm. Sylvie and Cindy. Cindy is a, a kitten. Mm-hmm. 
Dogo is a puppy and Brigader is a dog. Cool. So how does the story kick off? So they move into the house and then what happens? Does something strange happen? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's lots of things happen, like the enchanted butterflies and stuff. They start appearing. Right. So what's yeah. the story like? What happens? This adventure? What is the secret? Well, the w- good witch Wanda okay. has been defeated. And she lives in Grindlewood, does she? She used to live in that Grindlewood house about okay. five years ago. Right. Um, until she was um killed by the um evil warlock Warpheus. Warpheus, wow, that's a cool name. So a warlock is a male witch, isn't it? Yeah, wow. So there was a battle between him and her and they had a fight and she lost. Yeah, but before she died, um mm-hmm. she cast a spell on him. Okay. Cuz there, there's this um scary woods behind a few miles away. Right. So she enchanted him so that when he went into the woods, he mm-hmm. went into the woods and then um he her spell made him turn into a wolf. Okay, so he's in the woods as a wolf. Yeah. And, and do the kids come across him, is he? No, not yet. Right. And he's trapped in the woods. He can't get out because of the spell. Okay, so he wants to get away from the spell, is it? So what happens? How do the kids get involved then? Um, I don't exactly know because of the... The series is one big adventure. Right, so that hasn't I didn't happened really yet. read it yet. Okay. I only read that book. So what is this book about then? What does this story tell? Well, it's about how they move in and they discover the um enchanted garden. That's mostly about it. Okay, and what's in the enchanted garden that makes a really good story? My favorite part is the they discover things. Mm-hmm. Like old secret well. Yeah. And stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's really good because um they left the wildlife to grow for a few days, like for a few months, actually. Mm-hmm. And then only then they started cutting the hedges, but only like so they didn't hurt any of the animals or the wildlife. Okay. And what's this story about this um, this uh, secret scroll? What's the story with that? Well, um, that secret scroll is actually um, that she wrote it. This is Wanda. Uh, Wanda, yeah. she wrote it. And she hid it in the garden. They think okay. it's in the garden. Um, they um, and um, well, that is the spell to set um, Wolf Warpheus free and okay. out of it and into his normal shape. But it can also defeat him, can't it? She wrote spells on the on the on the scroll. That yeah, can, can it can also him. defeat so him. So is I think and um, the animals have to try find him. Mm-hmm. Find it before what Warf- Warfius does. Well, you're probably wondering how he's supposed to find it since he's mm. trapped in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, he makes these um fake animals like crows that okay. are actually enchanted. I see. Like so, and is the, the, out of a cauldron, uh, and he sends them to look for it. And are the animals led by somebody? Is there a hero animal in it? Yeah, Timber. The Alaskan Malamute. I get you. So Timber has to lead the animals and try and find the secret scroll before yeah. uh, the warlock Orpheus. does. Right, cool. So that's what the first story is about. So how, how did you find the story? Was it exciting? Was it scary? Really, or? really, really exciting. Right. And was there any time in the book that you were a little bit scared? No. No, not really. So it's not a, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of an action-y type book, is it? Is there lots going on? Yeah. Grant, and obviously we have to ask these questions. Uh, you're seven. What do you think? What would be the earliest age that could probably read this? Would it maybe six? Six or seven mm, at your age anyway? About six and a half. Right. And then you can get, read the others. I see. So it's a little bit scary probably for maybe younger kids. Yeah. Yeah, Grant. And tell me, is there any... Um, there's a few illustrations in it, isn't there, as well? So it kind of guides you along as well, isn't there? Yeah. Right, so you actually get to see the characters. I see that there it's written in the books. Yeah, and there's and a there's couple of big pictures as well, too. Yeah, and there's about three or four or five of them. Yeah. And there's also a prologue. I think it's called a prologue. Prologue, yeah. That tells yeah. us a little story beforehand to give you an idea of what's happening. Yeah, and it's really good because mm-hmm. then it's easier to know. Mm-hmm. Unless you want it to be a big, 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 big surprise. Okay, um, I see. Yeah. And so would you recommend this book then as a good read? 
Yes. So it's the kind of book you want to curl up at night and sit down and have a read to, is it? Yeah. Grant, and were you like, were you reading big chunks of it or did it take a while to get through? Probably, I think it took you about a week, didn't it? Yeah, six so it's chapters quite, every it's, day. So it's quite a big book then, isn't it? I think, let's look. It's 24 like, chapters. Right, and there's about 300 roughly, just under 300 uh, pages as well. So it's a big old read. You have to go for it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. So how would you recommend, um, you know, let's talk about the rating Secrets of Grindlewood by Jackie Burke, maybe... 10 out of 9. 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 is a good result. So, and you're going to no pick up... There's no thing as 10 out of No, nine there's not, but that's okay. Really. <laughs> I think that's funny anyway. <laughs> and so we say, Jackie, well done. She's Secrets of Grindlewood is a big 9 out of 10 yeah. from, from Lydia. So you can get this book very easy though, can't you? Because you got this in the library, didn't you? Yeah. And and all the other books, I presume, are in the library as well. Yeah, I think so. Right, because it's, it's, it's not a brand new book, but sure, we're not here just to review brand new books, of course, because there's yeah. loads of books out there to read. So um, it's been published like a few years ago, but it's still a good read. So you, you next up, you're going to, you're obviously going to find out the next one, are you, after that? Yeah. Great stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break, and then we will be back after a second, because we're going to have a look at some of the books that you're reading at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Welcome back to part two of episode 11 of Lydia's Booktastic Podcast. Lydia, you're reading a couple of books at the moment, aren't you? Yeah. And you're back in school, of course, So, but you still have time, mainly over yeah. the weekends and the evenings. So what books are you reading at the moment so we can give people an idea? Now, uh, these are books that you've either only started or you haven't had a look at yet, and you're going to, um, you know, give them a shot. So I think yeah. what we'll start with is this one here. I was picking it up there. Kitten Club, which is a series of books, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and it's done by Sue Mongraden, who is well known for her books. I'm going to read out this one. It says, Amy, Molly, Lily, Ruby, Ella and Mia are the luckiest girls in the world. They've all got adorable new kittens and they've started up a club so they can swap stories about their gorgeous pets and it's going to be the best club ever. Right, so the stories are about the kittens, are they? And the adventures yeah. that they have. Okay, so um, you have, you're going to start on, ep- they're, they're in uh, kind of parts, aren't you? You've already won- done one. So we're going to yeah. do number two is, what's that called, Lydia? Smokey's Great Escape. All right, so basically it focuses on one, it focuses on, on one particular cat in each book, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Now they're short books, aren't they? How big are they, Liddy? They have about eight chapters. Right, so it's around maybe 100 pages. So they're a quick read. Yeah. So would you read these on the bus or something like that, or if you're going into school? Yeah, I actually did read them on the bus. Oh, very good. But now I don't go on the bus. I see. And the other question I want to ask you is, kiddies books, they're really kiddies books. So could you maybe, could you actually read this to younger kids? Yeah. Right, cool. And also, what age group is it really for? Say five-year-olds plus? Four or five up, yeah. Four or five. And is it exciting or what's what's the kind of stories like? What are they like? Are they they're kind of, really exciting. Are they funny as well? Yeah. Yeah, right. So they're pretty well written. Because like um, in one of the ones that I um, read, um, they had to chase um, the cat. Because um, I think it was Ziggy. Super name. This guy's called Ziggy. Right. I think, I think it was called Ziggy's New Home. Okay. Um, well, it was really, really funny because um, when you um, would read it, there was this part mm-hmm. um, where Ziggy's owner, can't remember her name, never mind, okay. um, was actually chasing him. Okay. And then he actually kicked the clothes onto her face. Oh, very good. So there's funny bits and all the way through. Yeah. So you're going to start, the next one you're doing is Smokey's Great Escape. Maybe we could do a quick review on that when we get a chance. And what's the next one? This looks real fun. Michael Morpugo, Six Animal Adventures. And it says here, there's always something funny happening down at Mud Puddle Farm, whether it's a mossop old farm cat trying to catch mice for once instead of 40 winks, Albertine the Goose Queen getting in on a flap, or pint size, the piglet trying to fly. The animals get involved in comic capers, not to mention Farmer Rafferty. So this is a funny book, then, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, the first time, the first one I got is yeah. the only one I got. Mm-hmm. It's called Hee Ha Hooray. I think that's the the um the last one in the series. Right, but it, it doesn't matter. In, you can. It isn't in this book and okay. um, the big book right. that we have um yeah and um inside it it's really funny so they're kind of wacky 
Okay, so these, this book that we're reading, The Six Animal Avengers, I think when we did our little bit of research, we found out that originally these books were kind of split in a little bit. And now they've yeah. been put together in this book, this yeah, compilation. Yeah, except for this one that I was talking okay, about. Okay, so He Ha Hooray is not in this book, is it not? Nope. Okay, good. I think it's because that was out, out like a month or a year later. Oh, okay. So have you read any of the stories? Have you started on this? Yeah, I started on it. I've already re- read two of it in here. Right. I don't need two of them mm-hmm. because I already read them in different books. Okay, and like, are they funny no. and cool, yeah? Yeah. Again, what's the age group, Lydia? What would you start with? It's kind of easy to read. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I don't really like about it right. is that, like, um, al- always when f- there's a part where Farmer Rafferty is working, yeah. he's always turning... You have to turn the book upside down and all the way around <laughs> okay. because um, all the words go in loop the loops and stuff when he's singing. Oh, right. That could be a bit annoying. But I suppose it's kind of a funny thing in it yeah. as well. So um, could you read these books to younger kids? Yes. Definitely. And do you laugh when you're reading it? Yeah. Do you laugh out loud? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's a, that's always a good sign of a book. So maybe when you're finished with this one, we can uh, we can have a listen listen to your thoughts about that. We can probably do a review on that as well. Now, I pulled out this book because you're always looking at this book all the time. You're always coming up to us, you know, with these kind of things. It's called Over 1,000 Facts. It's done by Miles Kelly. I know it's an oldish book. I think it's from a few years old. Yeah, around 2010. Um, but you enjoy this. You love this book, don't yeah, you? Yeah, and... um. Lots of people have these Miles Kelly books with only one thing, like one subject, like um, weather and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a book with all of them stuck together. Okay, so it's, what is it? It, uh, 1,000, over 1,000 facts. So, like, they cover things like space. Yeah, uh, I have a book about body, uh, birds. uh, What else have we got here? Uh, Let me see. Um, you got, ancient Egypt. Yeah, I love that part. I really want. So to get yeah, that, that was my part. next question. Which part is your favorite? Do you like picking up and just opening up and having a read of Egypt? Oh, so you like history then? And space. Um, and space. I love. Well, my favorite subject mm. is Egypt. Oh, okay. Because like, um, there's lots of things about like Cleopatra, um, pharaohs, mm-hmm. and um, especially mummies. And, of course, what's the biggest thing in Egypt you'll find? The pyramids. Yeah, yeah, and I also like to study hieroglyphics. Oh, hieroglyphics are cool, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're amazing. Like, they're pictures for, instead of words. Yeah, well, spelling my name is way harder <laughs> Did than Did you normal. try? Yeah. To? Um, wow. Well, this, I think it's the A. It's kind of an mm. eagle, and that's right. really hard to draw. Wow. And, so it's and images of the, things that make up letters. Yeah, and I right. think the L, it's either the L, I, or D. Okay. It's all, it's a fiend. It's either a phoenix. Yeah, one of them is a phoenix. And Mm. then the other is, um, uh, I think it's just a line. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the um, I is like just a a kind of D, Mm -hmm. capital D, except Mm -hmm. more thin and wide. Well, long. Mm -hmm. And whereas I think the D is a, what's it called again? I can't remember. Nah, it's not to the worry. thing that guards the pyramids, you know, that Oh, yeah, yeah. Half. It's kind of half animal, half yeah. bird. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, not that. Uh, um, sphinx, is it? Yeah, the yeah. Sphinx, the gotcha. Sphinx. Yeah. And overall, so you open this book all the time for interesting facts. So I think what we should do is we should do one thing together, the two of us, right? We should just have a random fact. Okay, yeah. so what we do is we open the book and we just go, dun, 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 close our eyes, open the book. Okay, stop. I am on page uh, 378 and it's called The Greatest Threat. So I'm going to read one of these. Um, 907. Habitat loss is not a new threat. It has been happening for thousands of years. Across much of Europe, farmland for crops and livestock gradually replaced once great woods and forests. This meant the disappearance from Britain of forest animals such as bears, wild boars, wolves and beavers. Wow. Okay, so these are really good uh, facts. So why don't you you try one yourself as well? Okay, and also, Mm. once when I was looking at it, sometimes I look at the Egyptian ones. Yeah. Um, I mostly read them in order, but yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes I go looking. And I found this one that says, Did you know in olden, um, long ago, cat mummies were made into fertilizer? Cats were made into fertilizer? Yeah, cat, cat mummies. mummies. Wow. Okay, so you go, random fact. Come on, just open the book anywhere. Close your eyes. Got it. Oh, you've got, I think you got Egypt, did you? Oh, you got Egypt. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so read one of those facts for us. How... Um... 
955. Okay, yeah. 955. Yeah, go ahead. The temple at Abu Simbel in the south of Egypt is carved out of sandstone rock. It was built on the orders of Ramses II. The second, yeah. Very kind good. Kind of hard. Oh, that's brilliant. It's like it says 11. Yeah. Um, it, the temple was built in such a way that on two days each year, the 22nd of February and the 22nd of October, the sun's first rays shine on the back of the inner room, lighting up statues of gods. Wow, that's amazing. So you, I can't believe and that. I can't believe that you picked out an e- e- Egyptian uh, fact. Sometimes there are these um, um, facts like, I don't believe it. And there's one here. I don't mm-hmm. believe it. Okay, go Temple ahead. visitors had to shave their off their hair and eyebrows before they were allowed to enter the building. Wow, I don't believe that. The sacred building. I don't yeah, believe that. Yeah, and that's that. exactly why it says, I don't believe it. <laughs> okay, do you believe that? Imagine you having Kinda. to shave your head to go into the temple. <laughs> I think I'd give that a pass. You'd think, be bald think, for the rest of the um, of your life or it's something. It's like, Lydia, do you want to go into the temple? You have to shave your head. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay, so this is a really good book. So you'd Luckily, recommend... Luckily, this year and um, these days, the, you go in tours and you don't have to shave your exactly, head. Exactly, that's brilliant. So you would like to go to Egypt then, I presume? Yeah, well, we... The only thing I don't understand mm-hmm. is how did they shave their heads off? They probably just used blades. They didn't have mm-hmm. blades. Ah, they did. They had swords and stuff like that. Anyway, so look, uh, definitely a book, book you'd recommend, Miles Kelly. Yeah. Never finish it. You'll always go back to it, won't you? It's kind of like a perfect book. You'll never finish it. And you'll, it's fi- you'll be still <laughs> reading it in hell. <laughs> Okie dokie. Right, listen. You that- will. It's <laughs> giant. I, I believe you. Okay, so anyway, we will be looking at two books in the next couple of weeks. Michael Moore Purgo, Six Animal Adventures and Kitten Club by Sue Mongraden. So Lydia will be coming back to all you guys and giving her thoughts and opinions on those books. Uh, so... Today, as I said, really good review for Jackie Burke's book, The Secrets of Grindelwald, and I'm sure you'll be sticking around to get to the next one. So that concludes episode 11. And of course, as always, we want to look look after and say a big hello to our friends at Woodbine Books, because like all books over Ireland, they're having a hard time and they really appreciate all the support that you can give. Books are still being printed. Isn't that right, Lydia? Yes. So they need to be bought. So please go into your local bookshop, just like Woodbine Books and Kilcullen, and ask for your favourite book. And if they don't have it, I'm sure they'll say, we will do our very best to get it. Isn't that right? Yeah. And of course, don't forget to visit your local library as well. That's also important because the people all around the world who are working in libraries are working in very hard circumstances. And we want to show our support by doing what? What do we do? We go to the library and... Ready, steady, read. That's exactly it. So listen, guys, until next time, uh, take care and uh, have a good time. And we will say goodbye to you now. Bye. Bye Bye-bye, guys. Take care.